welcome again to Knights of the Blind, the local TV show that focuses on those that have worked very hard to fulfill a promise that was made way back in 1925 to Helen Keller to be Knights of the Blind and help address preventable blindness and hearing loss. Tonight's guest is David Rich from here in Beaverton. Uh, David, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. It's, it's a pleasure to um, be here with you today. Well, thanks for being our guest, but more importantly, thanks for being a Knight of the Blind. And uh, just start off by asking, uh, I understand that you're a lion. Yes, I am. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the Lions Clubs? Well, I've been a lion uh, since, well, I've been a lion for 35 years. I started out in California in a club called the Susan Valley Lions Club. And my career took me from uh, California to Northern Virginia to Ohio and back to Oregon, basically. I started out in Oregon. I was, I was born in Vanport, uh, Oregon uh, many, many years ago and left actually after I graduated from high school and then went uh, uh, into the Navy and then worked for the Department of the Navy for 35 years. And so I came back 40 years later back to, to, to the Portland area. Wow, well, welcome back. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if I understand correctly, you're currently a member of the Beaverton Lions Club. Yes, I am. I'm, yes. And, and also the chairman of the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. Right, uh, th that's, uh, and that's quite an honor. Uh, I've, I've been a member of the Beaverton Lions Club since 2002 when, when I moved back to Oregon. But uh, as chairman of the uh, Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation, I had this opportunity to work with uh, a great staff to start with uh, there. Uh, and, and 25 great uh, trustee volunteers from around, the, uh, from around the state. Very dedicated, very hardworking uh, people that want to do something for less, people less fortunate than we are. That's great. And, and my understanding is that uh, the local Lions Club, such as the Beaverton Lions, uh, essentially work in partnership with the Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation to <coughs> help people with sight and hearing needs. Well, we do, and we do it in various ways. Uh, we su we support the foundation uh, through donations. Uh, we uh, support them through volunteer work. We support them for providing uh, eyeglasses for recycling. Uh, the uh, Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation is one of about 10 LURCs Lion's Eye Recycling Centers in, in the uh, country. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we gather about 150 to 200,000 pair of eyeglasses every year and get them processed and ready to give out to whoever needs them around the world uh, because they can be used in third world countries or places that do not have access mm -hmm. to uh, good medical care and glasses. That, that's really interesting. So I, I, I know that I, I've gone into I don't know, Fred Meyer stores or Safeways, and I've seen these eyeglass, these lion's boxes, mm -hmm. and I think I'm probably not the only one that has wondered when I put my old pair of eyeglasses in there, you know, what happens to those? Well, it's quite interesting. Uh, just in the city of Beaverton, we have about 25 pickup points, mm -hmm. and so we have lions go in a some sort, sort of organized manner and go uh, empty those glasses. And we take them down to the foundation. And the foundation has a storage center that they box them up. And then we end up taking them out to Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, which is a women's uh, uh, prison in mm -hmm. Wilsonville. And they have a class out there with from 10 to 20 uh, inmates who are honor inmates. And they take the glasses, they clean them, they calibrate them, and they learn how to be dispensing opticians, which is really kind of neat because of the fact not only are they helping people, uh, but they're also learning a trade. So when they get out, uh, they have something they can go sell and, and a trade that they can use. Wow, that's fantastic. Rehabilitation for the, the, the women inmates, and then as a result, some some recycled eyeglasses that can be used by, by other people. And you were telling me before we went on air about a trip to Mexico that you've taken to actually distribute right. these eyeglasses. Uh, my wife and I went down with a group of about 35 lions uh, several years ago. And we went down into Guadalajara and then took about a two-hour bus trip out of there. And uh, we went to a, a small town and we set up basically set up camp with, with the local Lions mm. Clubs down there and people would come from, you know, walk hours and hours to get there, to have their eyes examined and to be able to get a pair of glasses. And it was so exciting to be able to see somebody come in that couldn't see and and actually walk out being able to able to see. And that's where the rubber meets the road of being a volunteer, where you can really see that you help somebody right now. Right. And it's just terrific. So, so the, if I understand this right, you went down, what, spent a week or so? Uh, a week and a half, right. And, and the glasses that you and your other Lions uh, club members went down there with originated here in Oregon. Yes. 
And again, we're donated by Oregonians, but ended up getting onto the faces of, of those less fortunate in Mexico. Absolutely, and and That's it great. was from children to uh, to adults, and even to some of the the farm workers down there that didn't need glasses. We also took sunglasses down because the the sun is so bright down there that sunglasses are are a great aid to them to help protect their eyes. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, in a few minutes, you're going to tell us a little bit about a trip to Peru that you have coming up. But, yes. but before we do that, let's talk about eyeglasses. Uh, for those in need right here in Oregon, because uh, this is something that Lions do as well. Is that right? Right. right. We, have, we have opportunity to do s several things. Lions clubs in general, my Lions club, for instance, the Beaverton Lions Club, uh, takes applications from adults uh, who meet a certain economic level. We take applications for, for glasses and hearing aids, <coughs> excuse me, and we provide them with the opportunity to uh, go get a, an exam and get a pair of uh, eyeglasses, and we, we pay for them. And through the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation, we have a program that, that uh, is on hold right now, but it's a program where we were able to provide more f free eyeglasses and exams to uh, th those uh, uh, in need, and it's quite, quite exciting. We do the same thing with the children. The children actually are taken care of through several uh, mm. uh, reasons, but one of them, I'm on also on the board of the KEX Kids Fund. The KX Kids Fund has been around uh, for over 25 years, and it's a fund that Bob Miller started back mm -hmm. when he was on KEX, and Paul Lindman now runs, Paul and his wife Vicki now run, that basically is there for any child that's, that's on a free or extended or, or helped lunch uh, program is able to get a pair of free eyeglasses and or hearing aids. And the school nurses in, in the uh, 14 counties surrounding, surrounding the Portland area, including Clark County in Washington, is able to tap into that and, and get right. glasses and hearing aids. Yeah, and speaking of Paul and Vicki Lindman, I think it was not too long ago that uh, they had their annual golf tournament that supported yes. the KX Kids Fund. And it's such a great feeling to go out and play bad golf but know that as a result, you're helping children see better and, and learn better. Oh, so. bad golf, were you on my team? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, about kids then, uh, because the Lions uh, the, and the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation uh, have recently completed vision screening right here in the Beaverton School District and Tiger Tualatin and screened, I, I think, the kindergarten, first, third, and fifth graders. Talk to us a little bit about this mobile health screening right. program. We have, uh, through a capital campaign that the foundation uh, worked through over the last several years, we were able to raise a significant amount of money that allowed us to buy some state-of-the-art equipment. We have hearing banks, uh, uh, audiometers set up where mm -hmm. we can do uh, check all the children for hearing and we also have the new spot machines which is a state-of-the-art machine that within seconds can get a, a, a complete readout on the eye, eye health of a student and or an adult and it, it runs uh, it's got a computer running into it if there's a if, if if there's a pass or fail if there's a fail they send a uh, uh, a signal to the to the uh, printer. It prints out all the information. That information is taken to uh, uh, the school mm -hmm. nurses. The school nurses get to the parents, and then it depends upon whether or not the parents have the resources to be able to, to afford getting glasses for them or not. Whether we then we step in and, and do what we can if, right. if they if they can't afford the glasses. Well, it's just a, it's wonderful to me that that lions, you know, on their own time and their own dime, are are getting into the schools and providing not just the screening. But then when we identify uh, children that need help, and, and if I understand it correctly, about 25% of all children actually have a vision need, uh, yet less than 10% of kids that need glasses have them. Uh, but then you're actual, actually able to, to help them get the eye exams. Well, we can help glasses. them get the eye exam and the glasses. And one other thing that we, uh, we uh, check for is amblyopia. Amblyopia mm -hmm. is where one eye isn't working properly, it, it isn't focusing. I actually have amblyopia, and, mm -hmm. and so I'm basically blind in one eye. Had that been found when I was a child, we could have probably prevented that. And that's what we're doing now is we do a very simple uh, 3D vision test that uh, uh, can do it, because I know that it works because I can't see the, there's an mm -hmm. E in there and I can't see it, so I know that it works. But we do that, and if you pass three out of four, as they, they have these cubes and they change them around, if you can pass that, we know that you've got your 3D vision, which is great. And 
if I understand amblyopia a little bit, that, if you see a kid with a, an eye patch, it's quite likely that that's what they have. It's lazy eye. Right. Or, or it's, it's called lazy eye amblyopia, whatever. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different f things for it. And what they're doing is they've they're got a patch over the good eye to try to make the, 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 the faulty eye communicate with the brain is really what it's trying to do. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and if it's not detected at a very young age, that's when the child very likely would lose the sight in, in that eye. Right, and it's, I believe the age is somewhere around seven. If, if, you can't, uh, if you can't find it or start correcting it before that, there's a good possibility you're not going to be able to correct it at right. all. Right, and you know, this, this program is so important, and it's so wonderful the Lions are doing this, because uh, sadly, uh, here in Oregon, you know, we live in this beautiful state, but it's a state that uh, has some economic issues and, and, and budgets are getting cut and our, our school nurses are, are severely outnumbered by students. In fact, we have one of the worst ratios, I understand, of, of child to school nurse in the country. And so that's why a lot of schools are not screening their children's vision. And that's why the Lions coming in and doing it is hugely important because you're catching kids uh, <laughs> that otherwise would go blind. That's why you're a knight right. of the blind. Right. And also, the, you know, kids that don't see well tend to not read well. And when kids don't see well, they don't read well, they tend to not learn and they fall behind in school. Right, and, and, it's, and it's hard to, to find that. Uh, a good example was uh, our oldest son. Uh, he had not been screened. We were in California at the time, had not been screened. And uh, I took him to a... Uh, San Francisco Warriors basketball game, hmm. and he couldn't read the big screen up on the on the top where the score was. He couldn't read that, and we didn't realize until that time that he needed glasses. Now was Rick Berry playing on that? Yeah, team Rick yet? Berry. That's okay. a long time ago. Yeah, shooting the free throws. Yeah, he couldn't. Hand. So he couldn't see if he was shooting underhand. No, or, right. But uh, uh, but when you make ninety nine percent of them, it doesn't matter which way. Right, you shoot it. right. But uh, nonetheless, but that was a you know because he had not been screened either. So, matter of fact, I was uh, dealing with uh, one of the school nurses, Kim Bartholomew, who mm -hmm. we do a lot of work with, uh, on, on another sh subject of shoes and socks for kids, which our Beaverton Lions Club takes on. And she's the school nurse for five schools. And so she's, there's no way in the world that she can go in and mm -hmm. actively screen, because we, we do kindergarten, first, third, and fifth graders. And we do that for sight and hearing for everybody but kindergartens. Kindergartens are not very good on the hearing things because they're, they're, they haven't got the, the motor skills yet to quite do that. But, mm -hmm. And first graders are a little tough, too, but they, they make it happen, yeah. Yeah, well, it's just amazing the things that, uh, that, that Lions do. So, you know, tell us a little bit about the Beaverton Lions. What, uh, you know, what kind of activ activities do you do for fun, or, you know, where do you meet? Or Well, we, have, we meet at the uh, 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 Golden Crown restaurant uh, on Beaverton Hills uh, Highway. Our club has been around for 63 years. Wow. Uh, started in 19, no, 62 years, started in 1959. And so it's been around for a long, long time. And it is a, uh, a group of uh, men and women uh, who care about the community. We do, our major things that we do is we, we collect glasses naturally. We provide hearing aids and uh, 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 eyeglasses to the best of our ability with, with the budget that we have. Uh, we do, uh, I was talking about shoes and socks for kids. Mm. Uh, we take approximately 25 children and take them down to a shoe store. <coughs> and we're going to do this on December 11th of this year. And we buy them brand new shoes and, and, a, and a bag mm. of socks. And some of these kids, this is the first pair of new shoes. And we're going to do this on December 11th of this year. And we buy them brand new shoes and, and, a, and a bag mm. of socks. And some of these kids, this is the first pair of new shoes they've ever had. Wow. So it's really, really heartening to, to have them uh, come down and, and we help them f fit the shoes and so forth. And it's, and it's a wonderful program that we have. We do that. We uh, provide flags for first graders. Uh, it's a program we go into uh, select uh, elementary schools. Uh, I won't say select because there's so many of them. Uh, and we go in there and provide them with an American flag, a little bit of history on the flags, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's a little patriotism uh, thing that we do. Yeah. Uh, we also provide uh, uh, scholarships for seniors uh, uh, going into college. So there's quite a few things that we do, uh, and it's really enjoyable to be part of it. We uh, enjoy getting together, and we have a barbecue at our, actually at our house every year. We uh, have a, we just finished actually last week, a, uh, the 36th hole of our uh, uh, golf tournament we do. We play nine holes of golf, four different uh, nine hole courses, and uh, so we hmm. do that uh, the last uh, four months of, of summer basically and so that's yeah we do a lot of things together it sounds like you have fun as well as helping other people. absolutely the, the object of uh, you know 
What we do is a very serious business uh, of helping those less fortunate we are, but what we try to do is we know that, that uh, service is what it's all about, but camaraderie is, is what builds the case so that you continue to do that. Yeah, I know that uh, years ago when I was in, in, in college, I remember being uh, told uh, that volunteerism is the backbone of American philanthropy. Um, I've also read recently that volunteerism in, in, in America is actually declining somewhat. It, it is, unfortunately. Uh, we lost a whole generation, uh, about two generations ago, which I call the me generation, that it was all about them, it wasn't about giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And when you lose that whole generation, it's it's also the kids fall in that because they don't know what volunteerism is about, so we, we have lost to that. Um, if, if the Lions Clubs, the Quanners, the Rotaries, the Elks, all great organizations. They all give back to the community. And if it wasn't for the volunteer hours that are given by those communities, I don't know where our country would be or where our world would be. We have uh, Lions Clubs organization, the world's largest service organization, mm -hmm. is about 1.35 million members in 200 and some countries. So it's a huge organization. But here in the United States, because it's been around uh, uh, almost 100 years, is uh, it was in 1917 is when it was formed uh, in Chicago. Illinois, and since it's been around for 100 years, we, we've, we in the United States have lost the empathy for other people, and unfortunately, uh, we are declining in numbers, but we're trying really hard to, to, to help us grow because there's so much good that we can do, and we can do it in numbers. Yeah, and it's also interesting that uh, I, I believe that young people actually do want to help, and, and, and they do want to uh, develop, uh, have an opportunity to, to do something useful for other people, and I read something recently where, uh, where it said that Nine, nine out of ten people under 25 would be happy to volunteer and help out if somebody would just ask them. Well, that's part of the truth. Is, is It is uh, part of that. Matter of fact, we are uh, right now attempting to uh, form a campus club. We want to do a campus club, which is a club of college students. And we're looking right now at the University of Portland to see mm. if we might be able to get a campus club in there. Because nice. if students want to give back, we want to help them be able to do that. And we've got the resources and organizations, and we've got the tools to help them uh, go forward and, and the support that they need. That's great. And we also have a phone number that uh, you or someone that you know, if, if you're interested in learning more about Lions Clubs, there's the number right there. It's 503-413-7399. There's also a email address and a website that you can go to. And uh, you will be contacted back with uh, either the information of a Lions Club in your area or an individual that will get back to you. And we just uh, really encourage, uh, again, if <coughs> either you yourself or somebody that you know that uh, has a lot to give and has the time to do it, uh, Lions is such a great vehicle for helping others. And, and we've heard about <laughs> trips to Mexico. Uh, we, we've heard about helping people with eyeglasses and screening children. Um, what I'd like to, to hear about from you, David, uh, for a little bit is, is this trip to Peru uh, that we mentioned earlier. Who, who's involved with that, and, and who are you helping with this Peru trip? Well, it's very interesting. We are going with a group called uh, Faces Foundation. Faces Foundation is a, uh, a local Portland organization that uh, is very much into cleft palate surgeries. Uh, to Dr. Tom Albert is is the uh, the, the president of the lead of it. Uh, he uh, goes it's it's his own money, his own dime that he goes down there on, and he goes down and helps indigent children uh, that have cleft cleft palate diseases. And it's part of the third world country thing. It, it's it's mm -hmm. improper sanitation. It's a lot of things that that happen in third world countries. So we're going to go into uh, Chicalaya, Peru, and we're going to go with them. Uh, we're taking uh, uh, four. Uh, uh, four lions, uh, my wife Penny, uh, past international director Dennis Titcher, and past uh, international director Sonny Pulley, and myself, we're going to go down there. We're going to take 4,000 pair of glasses down there. Mm -hmm. We're going to screen uh, children and family for both hearing and for sight, and hopefully we're going to be able to teach the Lions Clubs down there that we're going to uh, partner with how to do that. We're going to leave that equipment down there, the glasses with them, so they'll be able to go out in the remote villages and mm -hmm. uh, uh, be able to screen and help the, the people in their area. So I've heard a little bit about uh, this region and this particular village that you're helping out, and it's really interesting to me how um, it, it's a coffee-producing region. Right. And if I understand it correctly, the, the women do most of the work, and they bring the, the, the coffee beans, be or they, they go to market with the coffee beans. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about 
um, what happens then once you know the, the the family in the village you know they sell their their crop um, but don't the, the 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 men play some type of a role in preventing some of the the money that they're earning. I guess I've been told the story that the men end up spending a lot of the proceeds in the bars. That's that's <laughs> kind of the process. Uh, uh, Cafe Feminique is is the organization, and it's actually out of Vancouver, Washington. Mm. Cafe Feminique, uh, who we're going to deal with down there, is a, uh, a, a organization that actually, if you go and, and you find a, the, their coffee, it's fair trade coffee. So mm. they're paying a decent wage uh, in, in comparison to right. what every, uh, everybody else would pay uh, to the women. But you're right. The problem is that in a lot of countries in the southern part, southern hemisphere, the men are still the ones that control the dollars, mm -hmm. and so they off, you know, they quite often uh, go that. But the women in in the uh, coffee growing cafe feminine organization are getting a lot stronger, Great. and and they're stepping up to to the uh, to the thing. As a matter of fact, the Lions Club down in uh, uh, Chicaleo uh, and. Uh, has a lot of women in the Alliance Club, which is really great. I've heard great stories about the women down there, yeah. and, and it's just fantastic that you're going down and, 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 and helping empower the women, and also, you know, help, helping the children that, uh, for some reason, there's a inordinate amount of, of facial cleft palates right. that, that exist down there, which, if I understand correctly, can lead to hearing uh, issues. Right, the, the cleft palates uh, children r quite often do have a hearing problem. So uh, Dr. Albert, his thing that he really wants to do, it, it's a lot bigger than just the cleft palate. It is, it's about sanitary water. It's about mm -hmm. all the things that surround bringing a, uh, a, a child up, up in the country, up in the world, so that they are giving, and it starts from inception to birth to, to you know, child rearing. Mm -hmm. uh, if, 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 it's, if you don't have a clean environment, a safe environment to uh, uh, bring up into, you're going to have problems and challenges. Yeah, it's just uh, it, it, it's amazing to me uh, the impact that you're having really globally. I mean, you're and when I say you, I mean you personally, individually, as as well as lines in general, uh, going into third world countries, uh, sending eyeglasses off, and actually you know putting your own boots on the ground and going to these countries. It's really commendable, and and, and I really admire you for doing that. Um, yet at the same time, uh, being a lion is not all that you do. No, I'm also involved in a few other things. Like, excuse me, earlier I'm in, on the KX Kids Fund, which is, I've been on for about eight years and enjoy doing that. I'm also a Royal Rosarian. Uh, mm. Royal Rosarians, I, and I'm a new Royal Rosarian. I've only been in a little over a year. But uh, they're the official ambassadors of Portland, Oregon. And it's a great organization. They're about 102 years old now. And uh, uh, their, their thing is for you and uh, Rose and Portland Grows. And it's, mm. it's really, it's, it's based on the old English uh, hierarchy and so forth, but it, it's a group of just outstanding people in the Portland community that, that uh, uh, are, are part of that. And it's really um, an opportunity. I was invited to be, become a member, and I'm really thrilled that I accept the opportunity to do that. That's great. And, you know, I think most of us, of course, are aware of the Rose Festival. And I think some of us are aware of the Rosarians, but, but but uh, probably don't know a whole lot about the role that they play, not just with the Rose Festival, but as ambassadors for Portland. So can, can you tell us a little bit about the, the history of how the Rosarians were created? Well, actually, uh, they were created, let's say, about 100 years ago when uh, the fertile ground in Willamette Valley is perfect for growing roses. Mm -hmm. So over the years, as, as the wagon trains rolled down the Oregon Trail coming uh, back or to Oregon, a lot of... Um, the people that had more money, should say, were able to tend and bring roses and, and start planting them in, in the uh, uh, mm. Oregon area. And so at one point uh, it became, and I'm not exactly sure whom it was, said, that, you know, we ought to have an organization that, that, that uh, talks about the state of Oregon, and, and at that time, the state of Oregon, uh, we were formed in 1859, mm -hmm. so uh, at that point, it was just barely a state, but Portland was known as Stumptown at that time for many, uh, many reasons, but uh, the western hills of where the Washington Rose Test Garden is right now is became very prominent with roses, and so that's sort of, uh, that's why we're the Rose City. Uh, you know, we had the Rose Parade, Pasadena has the Rose Festival, but mm -hmm. we are the Rose City, and, and uh, uh, that that's that is our number one. Uh, you know, when you think about Portland, Oregon, it's it's, it's the Rose City, and and, and the uh, 
Rosarians have adapted that very well. That's it's correct. quite an exciting. If you see out in, in, in a group at, at a meeting in an airport, uh, people out there in, in uh, uh, white hats mm -hmm. or, or white white uniforms and straw hats, that's Rosarians. So you know, we all know that the Rose Festival takes place uh, in in early June. Right. But the Rosarians, you're active actually uh, throughout the year. What are some of the events, other events that you've attended we, as we a Rosarian? Actually, we just got back a couple weeks ago from Leavenworth. They have the uh, um, the, Be the Bavarian Festival. Mm. They have the Bavarian Festival up in Leavenworth. We've been to Wenatchee for their Apple Blossom Festival. So we support a lot of the festivals. Astoria has a regatta a festival. There's one in Seattle. There's one in Tacoma. So we go uh, as a group to support them, and they come down to support us. It's, it's quite a quite an uh, organization. It's a Northwest Festivals Association, basically, which which kind of brings that all together so it's quite exciting but we start meeting as a matter of fact our next our first meeting of the year will be in November and we meet through uh, June and we accumulate it at the Rose Festival mm -hmm. and then we go uh, from June through October we do the, the visitations and so forth and then we start meeting again like say in, in November so yeah it's, it's quite a quite a group group there's, there's a big foundation that they have they help uh, uh, one of the major things that they do is they're helping kids go on on uh, field trips, uh, you know, it may only cost seventy-five cents or a dollar for mm. be able for a kid to go on a field trip. But if you don't have seventy-five cents or a dollar, you can't go. So our right. thing is to, to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to go out to McLaughlin Park or to go wherever the uh, field trips would take them. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. So you know, earlier we mentioned, of course, that you're a Beaverton Lion. Uh, we didn't exactly mention uh, that there are. Lions clubs, in essence, really all around Oregon. Absolutely. Um, pretty much almost every community. There's what 175, 175 Lions clubs. 175. Yes. Yes. And I imagine, uh, as uh, chairman of the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation, you probably traveled around and visited some Lions clubs. I've had an opportunity to visit a lot of Lions clubs, and and my wife and I go to all of the conventions that are around the, uh, around the state. It gives an opportunity to meet the wonderful people that that just give of themselves all the time. So yes, there are, there. we have four districts throughout the, uh, uh, through the state. Uh, the, the largest district happens to be the one in the Portland because we have more population here. We have approximately, in this district, we have approximately 45 clubs. And uh, uh, it's, I, I've had the opportunity to visit uh, probably 42 of the 45 clubs. And it's really, wow. really neat to go out and just meet the people that, that you uh, uh, get to help serve. So, you know, we uh, live in a beautiful state, you know, whether Absolutely. or not it's from, from the, the, the Pacific Coast through the Willamette Valley and the, the Cascade Mountain Range and the high desert. And then, of course, you know, f f uh, far eastern Oregon. And in all these communities, there's Lions Clubs d doing similar projects as you've described. Uh, being Knights of the Blind and helping address uh, the, the promise made to Helen Keller. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Knights of the Blind.